Okay, I just wanted to give you a short little snippet of bladder pathology, um, in particular carcinoma in situ, just showing some of the uh, classical morphological features, um, immunohistochemical features, and a couple of little pitfalls that uh, you should try and avoid. So this bladder biopsy consisted of three fragments on low power. There is some obvious chronic inflammation, um, as happens with many of these inflamed mucosa biopsies. Um, some of the epithelium or urethelium is denuded. Um, I want to target two particular areas that I think are really um, very informative and also, as I say, show a couple of little pitfalls. The first area shows what I would regard as the classic features of carcinoma in situ. Just as a reference point, here are some nuclei of urethelium, adjacent urethelium, and this is a good reference because you'll be able to see the nuclear size of slightly inflamed urethelium versus carcinoma in situ. So the hallmarks of carcinoma in situ are that the nuclei are large, they're hypochromatic, there's usually suprabasal mitotic activity such as here, and probably most importantly is that there is lack of maturation and architectural disorder. Um, I think that is a really important part because certainly some of the other features, nuclear enlargement, um, uh, among them can be seen in reactive change. So it, architectural disorder is really very important. That same area that we saw just on the on the previous slide um, was stained with P53 and CK20. I use those as a combined um, as you'll sometimes see KIC67 used as well. Um, but this should demonstrate really nicely what we see in carcinoma in situ where instead of having the umbrella cell layer of the urethelium staining with cytokeratin 20, you, you get full thickness staining and that relates to the area of ATP that we've seen histologically. Similarly, instead of basal, quite weak basal, um, P53 staining, you get full thickness, strong staining. So the second area again has similar, very very similar features to what I was saying before and that is that here's the intact adjacent urethelium with small nuclei show it so, showing some orderly architecture, although it it's, can be really quite hard to interpret um, especially if the urethelium is disrupted or there's a lot of chronic inflammation. And these are probably umbrella cells at the surface here, so there is a normal maturation towards the surface. But just adjacent to it, we've got these large cells and lack of maturation. Now one thing that people often talk about is a high nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio in carcinoma in situ, and I don't believe it really, because a lot of these cells will end up being volu having voluminous cytoplasm. And uh, so I don't think that's a really strong feature. But you can see just the, st the, the vast increase in nuclear size from these cells here to these cells here. What is a pitfall though is when you get the immunohistochemistry back, oh, here's a, a slightly higher power showing those nuclear features that I was talking about, and just that, just noting the fact that the nuclear to cytoplasmic ratios aren't always a lot higher, but the nuclear size is mammoth. And there's the hypochromasia. I don't see any mitosis in this section. So I got the immunos back on this and this is what I wanted to point out. Here's some uh, P53 nuclear staining and this is a slightly increased here um, which is a little bit more than I would expect usually but um, again I wouldn't have been making the diagnosis and I think this is the point I want to make. You don't make the diagnosis of carcinoma in situ based purely on immunohistochemistry because if anything, this is slightly raised, and if anything, I'm surprised by the fact that the nuclear staining isn't stronger in these areas. And similarly, cytokeratin 20 is negative in this area as well. Now, I'm suspicious that that just hasn't worked in that area, because we've probably got close to umbrella cell layer here and we haven't got any staining. Looking back on the previous biopsy, we saw positive staining, full thickness cytokeratin 20, and prominent P53 staining and then we go back to this case here. 
So I think the important things is the morphology of carcinoma in situ is extremely important. Um, the immunohistochemistry usually supports the morphology, um, but if it doesn't, don't give up um, on what is otherwise morphological carcinoma in situ because immunos aren't the panacea. They're a help, but they're not the panacea of it.